right, let's get into our show here. We are going to do a quick review on the GI Milsim, the sleep mask, okay? The, um, looks a lot like a profiler, but one of the things that really caught me off guard with this was that even though it looks, you know, it's got like the profile type lens, this is uh, hard plastic. So when you uh, see this on the internet, it looks like it's like a soft rubber. It is definitely not. Hard plastic all the way around, including at the top. And um, lens is really good on this, foam is really nice on this, uh, clarity is really nice on this, uh, the strap is really good, it is something that I do like to look at. Um, the, the back of the strap has got that silicone which helps it from slipping up and down on the back of your head. Everything about the mask is pretty nice, it's actually a lot smaller on your face than you would think it is. But it will catch you off guard when you first get it in that this is a hard plastic all the way around. For some people, that may be a good thing. You know, if you don't want any sort of impact of the uh, round, you know, bouncing off your mouth like on a on an E-Flex, or you know, you're not looking for something to uh, something where you're going to feel the impact. With this mask, all you're going to feel is a splash. Not a bad mask for the price. I think they're selling for about forty bucks. Um, if you're looking for something a little softer, a little bit more flexible, then you probably want to go with like a Pro Flex, but. Not a bad mask, not a bad effort. For 40 bucks, it's a pretty nice mask. It's, it's a lot smaller than what it feels like. This piece right here where it curves in goes right up against your mouth. And um, I don't know, not, not a bad, I'm not sure if I would, I, I, if, if someone's looking for a beginner mask, one of my favorite masks to recommend, especially for either female players or for people with smaller faces, has always been the Pro Vantage, okay? The V-Force Pro Vantage. That one sells for about 30, 40 bucks. This mask, someone with a little bit of a bigger face, looking for a cheaper mask, an inexpensive entry level mask, I'd probably recommend this. It's, it's definitely not bad, it's definitely a pretty good effort, and for the price, it's I think it, it's priced right for what you're getting out of the box. So, pretty good mask. I would like to see maybe some sort of head protection piece on it, you know, kind of like the Profiler, it's got that little soft rubber piece that covers up the forehead. But uh, other than that, not a bad effort by uh, GI Bill Sim on this one. If they come out with a soft rubber one, uh, just like that, I think it would sell really well. If they opened up the mouthpiece just a little bit, gave a little bit more room in front. Okay, another thing we're going to talk about, going forward, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make a commitment. I'm going to be making shows and uploading them every Friday. So going forward, every single Friday, we're going to upload a show. That's going to be the, uh, the new schedule. Now, if I come across more content, I need to upload more videos, uh, I will, but you can um, pretty much going forward, you can almost guarantee that there will be a new show uploaded on the TechMe YouTube channel every Friday. And the last video we put up, we talked about show tips, and uh, or show tips, show requests, stuff like that. Got a couple, couple things here uh, from a couple of the people that have commented, and I'll just go through them briefly. Uh, the Prestige Paintball made a comment about Airsoft. Honestly, I've never played Airsoft, so I, I've just never played it. Uh, uh, many years ago, I remember when Airsoft was first coming about, I, mean, I heard a lot of store owners that sold Airsoft said there was a lot of problem with quality control, said a lot of the, uh, the Airsoft guns were just made terribly, it was hard to get replacement parts. I don't know if that's changed or not, but it kind of turned me off to it. Um, but I've just never played it. I see people playing it, I don't have any judgment on it. I, it's just a completely different sport. I don't know, it doesn't... It doesn't really, I don't know, I, I know there's some sort of rift between paintball and airsoft. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I've just never played it, I, but I don't, I don't really see it. it's two totally different ways of playing style. I don't know, it's just, I, I don't see paintball and airsoft really having any sort of similarity or anything. So, I've just never played it. So, sorry to disappoint you there. Uh, X Stimmy XX asked about the Milsim movement. You know, if I had any opinions on the Milsim movement. I actually do. Milsim and paintball, one thing about paintball, you gotta understand when people come out to play paintball, they're coming out to escape their problems. If you you discount, if you if you you know cast judgment on people for wanting to explore almost like a fantasy role when they come out and play paintball, if they want to dress up and look like you know like a SWAT team member or look like a military member or something like that, um, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Look at Harley Davidson. Okay, Harley Davidson, one of the greatest success stories in in America. You know, if you go to uh, uh, any Harley night or biker night, you're going to see people all dressed up in leather. You know, they look like, you know, Hell's Angels out of the 1960s and 70s, okay? But then when you actually talk to them, a lot of them are lawyers, accountants, they're doctors, they're professionals, they're working class people that, you know, that that just enjoy embellishing a role and, and dressing up like that and riding the motorcycles and it's just something that just allows them to escape 
take on almost an, an alternate personality on the weekend and go do something fun and, and stuff like that. I think in, in paintball, you know, too many people I think want to cast judgment because either they don't dress up like Power Rangers, like airball players, or they don't dress up like Milson people, you know, like, like G.I. Joe. I mean, it's like, take your choice. Do you want to dress up like a Power Ranger or do you want to dress up like G.I. Joe? I don't think there's a problem with either one of it, okay? I don't think there's, I don't think just because you dress up like a Power Ranger and play X-Ball that you should cast judgment on someone that dresses up like G.I. Joe and wants to play Milsim or MagFed or, or uh, Limited Ammo or, or anything like that. Or they play, you know, st strictly scenario with the scenario vest and stuff like that, with the sidearms and stuff like that. I don't see a problem with either one of them and I, I don't think you should be casting judgment uh, regardless of what side of the fence you're on. Even, even people that are like classic gun collectors, okay? Um, people that come into paintball, if, if you... If you take away the one thing that people play paintball for, which is to take on an, an, not necessarily an alternate personality, but to come into the sport and just get to be someone else for a couple hours, if you take that away from you, there's really not much left in paintball for them to enjoy doing, okay? For a lot of people coming into paintball for the weekend, dressing up like, you know, dressing up like a SWAT team member and kind of embellishing in a role or playing a scenario and, and doing the, you know, doing a mission as, as like a coordinated tactical effort, this, that, and the other, that's a lot of fun, okay? And I don't think anybody in paintball should, you know, should go after a person or make fun of them because they want to do that, okay? That's one of the only things that's keeping them here is the fact that they don't have to worry about working as a, you know, a supervisor at their job, whatever it is that they may do, or, you know, maybe they work manufacturing or something, or retail, you know, or something like that, and they get to come out and play paintball, and they get to take on a different role for a couple hours, and they go back to their normal life. They're escaping their problems. They're they're relieving stress. That's a great thing. So if someone wants to, you know, if, 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 the, if there's a Milsim part of paintball that's taking off, good. Good for it, okay? It's great. As a matter of fact, the Milsim part draws probably more people in to play paintball than airball does. They come over, they see these guns that look like, real guns like man that would be kind of cool to own that as like a toy and then they go out and play once okay that's kind of fun then they stay in it and then they move on to other equipment that better suits their needs but um i, I don't have any judgment on milsim whatsoever i think it's i think it's fun i think it's healthy i think it's it's a great thing for paintball and i think if you fuck with it it's i think i think it's a really bad thing for someone to cast judgment on someone else who wants to embellish a particular role when they come out and play paintball okay so um, I, I, you know, if you, if you want to dress up like, you know, dress up like a GI Joe, put on a scenario vest, go out there, work out tactical missions for a couple hours, and go back to your daily life. Good on you. That's all I gotta say. Good on you. Dress up like a Power Ranger and go play airball, play, you know, in the bouncy house and stuff like that. Good on you. Okay. <laughs> Anything that get, it gets you to enjoy paintball more, gets you to go out there and relieve stress, and then go back to your normal life, feeling healthier, feeling refreshed, feeling like you did something over the weekend. Good on you. So, anyway. Um, next question came in from, uh, I think it's PaintLurk14, P-E-Y-T-L-U-R-K-14, asked about playing in the heat. Very, very important uh, topic. I mean, here in Florida, we're kind of used to always playing in the heat, but I know a lot of places it gets really cold and it gets really hot. Here in Florida, it's just always hot. The number one thing you always hear people talking about is hydration, okay? And, and the thing about hydration is you have to get ahead of it. It's not anything, you can't show up to the field dehydrated and then start playing and then try to catch up on the hydration. It, it, it won't work, okay? You have to show up to the field plenty hydrated, okay? I mean, you, you, usually when I go to the field, if, you know, when I'm really getting ready to get into it for a couple hours, you'll see me go to the bathroom probably every 20, 30 minutes, all the way up until when I start playing and I start sweating. Um, the easiest way, the, the night before, you know, watch your caffeine. Caffeine's a diuretic. You're gonna be peeing like crazy after you uh, drink coffee or any sort of other energy, any sort of caffeine beverage whatsoever. Caffeine is a diuretic, okay? It's gonna drain you out. It's gonna make your mouth dry. It's gonna make you piss every 30 seconds. You are gonna get dehydrated drinking caffeine. Another thing is, is alcohol. Alcohol, your body's gonna use a lot of the fluids inside you to, to flush out the alcohol out of your system. If you're drinking alcohol, you're drinking caffeine or a combination of both, you're gonna have a long day at the field, as many people have found out. Hydration you just got to get ahead of it okay start drinking pretty you know start drinking water in the morning and one of the best ways to tell if you're hydrated is very simple if your urine comes out and it looks like this okay if your urine comes out and looks like that but this is just basically orange juice if it comes out looking like that you're gonna be dehydrated okay if your urine is coming out of you and it's clear most likely you're hydrated so you know you're gonna want to be you know your bladder should be calling for a break at least every hour or so, um, you know, you know, you play a little bit, play for 30, 45 minutes to go and take a little breather and, 
and um, you know get get some fluids in you. So, but it's something that you've got to get ahead of. You got to think when you get to the field, your hydration level is going to go into the toilet right away in terms of you know in terms of how much fluid is going to be in your body. And so you've got to get ahead of it before you even get to the field. You know, drink a little bit the night before, and and make sure you're hydrated the night before. The next morning, you know, you got to remember you're sleeping for eight hours. And if you were at work for eight hours straight and didn't take a single sip of water, you'd be pretty thirsty. So in the morning, get some fluids in you right away. And, and then when you get to the field, continue that and maintain that. And then when you're all done, continue to drink fluids and, and you should be okay on hydration. Another thing with playing in the heat, this is one of the most important things, is get some wicking fabric clothing on you, okay? Um, I see people going out there and they're in these triple layer cotton, I mean you might as well wrap a comforter around you. If you're going to go out there head to toe in cotton, you might as well just go out there and wrap a comforter around you. Put, you know, put on a sweater or something like that. That makes no sense. You want wicking fabric. That's the most important thing. Under Armour, wicking fabric, spandex, okay? You can get it for cheap. You can get the generic stuff, works almost just as good. You can get the premium stuff like Under Armour, Nike makes it too. All the companies make it. But, you know, it, it all starts, you know, um, Under Armour boxer briefs is one of these I, I will not play without those things on. I mean, regular cotton underwear, regular cotton boxer, Boxers, it just holds all that heat inside of your pants and it's just bad. <laughs> it, you're going to really get warm. Another thing is obviously um, wicking fabric. Uh, you know, I, I like to wear a long sleeve wicking fabric. And another thing too, if you've got paintball pants and your paintball pants may have a real heavy duty mesh liner inside it, cut it out. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, going inside, making, you know, seeing how the mesh liner goes throughout your pants and then just cut the mesh liner out. But a lot of the pro players do that. Um, it's actually so much so that if you look at, I think, the 2012 dye pants, they no longer have a mesh liner in it because in the previous years, a lot of the pro players were just cutting out the mesh liner to uh, reduce the amount of layers and reduce the amount of fabric inside of their pants. So, he, you know, that's the, stay hydrated, wear as much spandex as you possibly can, take breaks, and... Um, and and that's you know that that should be about it. It's you know I, you know it's just something you've got to plan for. You can't show up there with three layers of cotton shirts on, plus a jersey, plus all your pads, plus you know you know cotton boxers on, this that and the other, and, and 100 degree heat, and expect to be able to make it through the day. Spandex, lots of water, you'll be good to go. Okay, and Russ Jordy says, Mike, change your avatar on Tech B. No, I'm not going to do that. I love my avatar on Tech B. I think it exudes a certain amount of professionalism and elegance. And uh, from somebody that runs a website with 45,000 people on it, that's definitely the, uh, you, know, you know, the image I want to pro uh, project. So, um, BSA Sniper 98 asked about balancing school, work, and paintball. That's pretty simple. Paintball, bottom of the list. School, top of the list. Work, somewhere in the middle. So, <laughs> nothing's more important than, you know, nothing's more important than school. There's nothing, you know, nothing more important than work. And, and paintball is a hobby, so that goes right down to the bottom of the list. So <laughs> paintball is just something you just go and do for fun. Um, I honestly wouldn't put really any sort of importance on paintball whatsoever. You do it for fun, do it for stress release, do it, up, do it as a hobby. Um, but everything else comes first. Family comes first, um, job comes first, school especially comes first. Put it way down at the bottom of the list. So, you know, do it when you have fun. You know, do it to have fun. Do it when you have the money. Do it when you have the time to do it. But other than that, I would not put paintball above anything else in my life. It's something that I do for fun. It's something that I enjoy. It's it's not worth sacrificing uh, other things in your life to play paintball. The only thing it's going to do is make you resent it. It's going to make you sell all your gear, and it's going to make you get out of it way faster than you ever wanted to. You, when you go to play paintball, you want to go there because you. You enjoy playing it, and you've got the time, and you've got the the uh, the money to play. You don't want to be racking up credit card debt, bombing in school, failing classes, almost getting fired at your job to go play paintball because it's you know when, when everything else falls out from underneath you, paintball is not going to be the net to catch you. I can promise you that. So paintball, bottom of the list, very simple. Okay, um, X1 Hellsaber 1X asked how to make swabs last longer. That's pretty easy. Don't put them in the washing machine and don't put them in the dryer. Uh, wash them by hand and let them air dry. That's the best. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you. Just take them over to the sink after you're done playing. Um, you know, take them and just rinse them with your hand. Put a little dish soap on them. Rinse them with your hand and um, just let them air dry. Just put them in your garage or put them on your patio or put them in your shower and just you know let them just hang there. And two three days later they'll be nice and dry. You don't have to worry about it. Accuracy show. Accuracy from I found is a combination of using good paint, uh, premium evil. You know, I, I love keep. Key quality paint, they're a big sponsor of Tech PB, but you know, with their factory being over here in St. Petersburg, I've shot key paint for years, um, even before they helped us out on Tech PB. It's always been great paint. Um, it, accuracy, I found, is a combination of a well-maintained, 
clean gun and good paint. You do all that, most of the time you're going to have a very accurate gun. You can have good paint and an expensive gun, but if it's dirty, it's going to shoot terrible. Um, you can have junk paint through an expensive gun that's clean, it's going to shoot terrible. So good quality fresh paint combined with a very clean, well-maintained gun, most of the time it's going to shoot really accurate. So, <laughs> you know, you got to make sure your loader is clean. If, you're, if your loader is packed full of dirt and you're, you're and packed full of um, oil from paintballs and it's just all gunky inside and the inside of your gun is all gunky, it's, you're not going to shoot very well. So that's, that's, that's the best place to start in terms of barrels. I mean, most stock guns right now are coming with very nice barrels. I think the last bad barrel I saw on a gun was maybe the ion barrel. I mean, most of the guns nowadays are coming with very clean barrels. They're regulated guns. Most of the guns right now made in 2012 are great top quality guns. So I would definitely, uh, I would definitely start with that. Good quality paint, clean up your gun. That's, I mean, it, it really doesn't get much, much easier than that. So most paintball players do not like cleaning their equipment. I've cleaned tons and tons of guns that uh, it looks like it was found at the bottom of a swamp. They wonder why the guns are shooting like shit. And I wonder why. So that's about it um, for right now. But we're going to be, uh, like I said, going forward now, look for shows on Friday. I think going to this uh, one show a week is going to really help me uh, balance all the other things I got going on right now. And also, it will give me all week to come up with a really good show to put out on Friday. So that's about it, guys. Uh, definitely uh, definitely appreciate everybody putting in on the show requests. There's a couple other things on here, Budget Baller. Uh, updated mass show stuff like that. I'll get to that here in the uh, in the future.